Hi folks, MRI machine, headphones, and a broken part. Let's use Fusion 360 and the Torbox Slant Plow to fix this part. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. So here's the broken part, and it's a classic example of a part that probably just isn't made very well based on how it's being used, which is that the MRI technicians or operators keep breaking this part off where it has a stress riser. And if you take a look at that split line, you can see that this part was molded, and it's probably just too thin uh, where the tubing grooves intersect the main body. So we got a request, can we make the replacement part because they were buying brand new complete headphones for $395 because guess what? The company doesn't want to sell them this little replacement part that conveniently keeps breaking. So first up, the material. So what to use here? Well, we can't have anything magnetic near an MRI machine and you really don't even want anything that's in any form of, of a metal, even aluminum or brass or copper. So the answer is really a plastic. Peak happens to work pretty well here. It's very strong. This is a glass reinforced style of Peak and it's 33 bucks for a one foot length, but that's relatively cheap to the task at hand. It's also commonly used in the medical industry, which again could be overkill here, but was also just a nice benefit. We've got it set up in a 5C collet on the Tormox Slant Pleuro and warning, you're going to see some major deflection. That's a problem, but we're also gonna talk about it. Let's talk about how to fix it going forward, both with tooling and cam, but also let's talk about what the application and task is at hand and if it really matters. So we've got a half inch piece of material. It's sticking out just a hair over an inch. So it's actually not that much stick out. Normally I think about four times stick out as being the max I, I wanna comfortably use. So in that case, that would be about two inches. But as you get down to narrow diameters, like half an inch, that becomes a little bit more pronounced. So I try to look at say two times stick out. And here, the problem is that we're gonna start machining down to a significantly smaller diameter, which again, exacerbates the deflection. After the quick face, we're doing an OD profile turning operation with a VNMG insert, max spindle speed RPM of 2,500 RPMs, and we're turning at 8,007 inch feed per rev. We've got roughing passes turned on to make a maximum roughing step down of 0.1 inch, as well as a finishing pass of 10 thou. Right here, you can start to see what that deflection is doing. So the problem is that we're turning this diameter down to about 0.37 and with an overall length of about 1.15, but we've also got some material sticking out of the chuck, or say we're about 1.4 divided by 0.37 diameter, we're almost four times stick out. And again, that might be okay if it were one inch or two inch aluminum or steel, but it's not, it's three eighths of an inch and it's plastic, which is going to be more subject to deflection. And you can watch that deflection increase as the diameter decreases. You can also see a taper in the part from that deflection as it turns with more deflection out towards the end and less deflection as it moves towards the spindle. So timeout. So let's talk about a few different ways you could improve this or reduce it all together. First off, we could choke up on our raw material. Say hold it with only about half as much sticking out, finish this turning operations, and then move the part out to do the finish work. The second option, which might be my favorite, is let's duplicate this whole setup. And I'm gonna call this one grooves first. So let's say in this example that what the customer cared about was the tolerance of these grooves. And in, the, in this specific case, the grooves and how they fit with the tubing is the most important tolerance of the part. The rest is really just aesthetic. I'm gonna take the OD profiling operation and I'm also going to duplicate it. So we've got two versions of it. On the first version, I'm gonna edit Go into geometry. Now, normally I'm a numbers guy. I very much prefer using hard-coded numbers in the offsets to adjust the front and the back containment zone. What you can also do in Fusion is grab these and just slide them around. And that updates the number showing you what you've got, which you can do a sort of a hybrid of both. So let's say I want to adjust this stock back. I've seen the 0.6 gets me here. So maybe we'll just do 0.65 and model back a 0.175. 0.125, click OK. Now we'll want to change the second setup to have rest machining checked. 
That way it won't remachine that area. What this will do is obviously machine these three grooves first. What's important though is that we have not machined any of this area here. So we're maximizing the diameter to minimize deflection to maintain the best accuracy before we come back and do the rest of the work. The last way and probably the best way to tackle this is tooling. We're using a off-the-shelf VNMG insert. You can see a photo of that insert here and most importantly we can see a negative insert with a chip breaker you know, recommended for steel roughing. If we look at the holder it's also hard to tell but this has a downward angle so we've got a negative insert and we've got a negative holder. Now there's a joke that I don't like lathes and that's mostly just a joke. But the truth is, one of the things that I struggle with lathes is there's so many options on tooling and recipes and inserts. In fact, card here to the video we did with Paul Diebold on evaluating some of the different style of inserts and looking at how they can cut and just how much they can change with the horsepower and the cutting style changing the inserts. But here, the trick is to get rid of the negativity. Move to a positive cutting angle. If you do a quick Google image search, there's a picture right here that I think does a great job of showing. Right now, we've got the style of insert that's on the right. It's a negative angle, and so it's a downward facing angle. Why would you ever use this? Well, it's a much stronger insert because it's fully supported below the cut, and it's going to be able to push that tool harder. It takes more horsepower though. Worst of all is it tends to want to push the material away from the tool of the cutting edge. So what you want to do is move to a positive. So you can see here, this is kind of what you would think of as, as the more natural cutting action. If you had to cut something by hand, you would want to do so with a positive angle. It's lower cutting forces, so it takes less horsepower. But more importantly here, it, that's going to provide a better shearing action of getting that cutting edge up underneath the material, in this case relatively easy to cut plastic, to perform that shearing action with less deflection. How do you go about doing that? Pick up a high speed steel tool. If you've got some blanks on hand, you could grind one, you might be able to buy one, or you could meet it in the middle. I would probably pick up something like this. This is a neutral, so it's not a right or left handed tool, but rather neutral high speed steel tool already formed from McMaster car. I would probably get this in and then I would add some positive rake or back relief to it as I saw fit based on that material. You could dress this up as needed with a diamond file. And that's important because high speed steel generally will last forever in plastics. This does have a fiberglass or a glass impregnation to it. So that will dull your tools. So again, dress them up with a diamond file or a stone as needed. And what you can see as we're cutting those grooves, you've got significant deflection. But here's the thing I'll throw out. Don't worry about it if it doesn't matter and you can still get the part done to the quality and the satisfaction that you need for the job at hand. I think that's a mistake we see folks make. And that's not to say that this is an excuse for not being able to run a part properly, but rather don't over engineer things. Don't over constrain or overdrive requirements when it's not necessary. The fit here is a snug fit over some plastic tubing that in and of itself is quite expandable. There isn't a high tolerance requirement, period. We got started machining 10 years ago because we had engineers and machine shops literally massively over designing stuff. At the time, I didn't know enough on how to add value to that situation by doing my own design or our own work. But that's what we've been doing over the past 10 years. And it can be a little bit controversial because there's a huge amount of respect for doing things incredibly well. There's also a lot of respect for recognizing what is the task at hand and that's okay to do it right. Watching this video footage, the, the uh, deflection looks so much worse on camera uh, or more pronounced on camera than it does when you're at the machine. Yeah. Do I wish this was a little bit less? Absolutely. Would I have ground a custom tool to get this job done? Absolutely not. We got the job done great. And in the end, the customer was incredibly happy and they're working great so far. They've only been on the headphones for about a month. So we'll see how they hold up in the long run. After all that OD work is done, you will come in and drill those internal holes. Obviously that significantly weakens the part. So we want to do that at the very end. The other way to improve this obviously would be to support the material with a tailstock. Tormach does sell a tailstock for the Slant Pro. I don't really like it. I don't think it's the best design. It's pretty cumbersome and awkward to work with. Uh, and really this Slant Pro is a chucker style lathe. Obviously these parts would benefit from some support down there. Just didn't have the way to do it here. For those interested in all the details on the speeds and feeds, card here to the NYC CNC uh, website page where you can download this Fusion 360 file that's got all the lathe feeds and speeds and cam setups in it. And finally, a quick part off. 
and let's put them together. So fun fact, this happened to match with the uh, Loctite that we were using in our Loctite super glue video, a card to that video here. Quick piece of advice, if you're ever struggling with adhesives, two different websites to use. The first is again, McMaster Car. They've got some phenomenal information on lots of amazing different types of epoxies and adhesives and different strengths and characteristics. The other is use the Henkel or Loctite website. We've reached out to them a few different times under their contact us, and they are a surprisingly phenomenal company in this day and age where so many companies seem to have mediocre customer service, where we've gotten really good responses from either really good tech support folks or even engineers. And in this case, we've got a little bit of a quirky requirement because we've got a material like Peak that generally doesn't want to adhere very well going into a plastic tubing and we wanted it to last. We also didn't want to use an adhesive that would cause the tubing to melt or other sort of a long-term sort of corrosion or weakness problem. The 4851 worked great. Uh, and is very secure, so secure that we barely got the second one on uh, all the way down before it started to cure and set. And last but not least, let's see if it works. So we brought the headphones with us to the shop. We couldn't take the whole MRI machine, but we headed over, plugged them in. It's got a really good slip fit. So these get pulled on and off as they switch between the different style of headphones for different patient preferences. Uh, and so we actually made them a handful of these so that if they do break or they need to retrofit different headphones that they've got, they can just pull off that broken piece and slip on these new ones. And finally, for those of you that are going to throw it out in the comments, I'll preemptively mention the other way we could do this, which might be even better, would be a simple non-adhesive male-to-male coupling style adapter. When we originally had started making these, the uh, MRI folks had only shown us the headphones, but after we saw how they're interchanging them with the tubing, uh, with the different styles, it occurred to me that that could even be an easier way. No need to do adhesives, and they could be almost like a quick change system like that. So we had to laugh because we were proud of this fix, but then I realized, wait a minute here, there's an even better way to do this. So if we have to make some more, we may do it that way. Otherwise, folks, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.